How's it going everyone? You're watching the Green Dream Project. Now if you caught our last video, you know we had some issues with the outside of our earth bag dome. Huge rainstorm came down, tore up the outside of the dome. Kind of washed away some of the thinner areas of Cobb. So that set us back. But we got everything patched up, everything's looking real nice, and I think we're finally ready to start building on these walls again. So because of the complication of these eaves and the loft, we can't lay bags right away. We're actually gonna do a layer of cob and then go back into the bag. So we are gonna start this cob layer. Now, I've been prepping dirt for this. Now, usually when I prep dirt for cob, I screen all the dirt to get all, all the rocks and everything like that, and just try and get it down to as fine a gravel as I can. But with this layer, I'm actually just digging the dirt. I'm gonna leave all the rocks in. I may take out some of the bigger, like fist-sized rocks and larger, but uh, anything like this, I'm just gonna leave in. We're gonna try and get as much uh, aggregate in this mix as possible. From what we've been reading, the more aggregate in the dirt, the better. It'll help bind everything really nice, make it really strong, really tough. I might even add some of the coarse concrete sand that we have left, but I'm excited to try this out. This will be our first cob wall and it'll be part of our earth bag dome. So I'm kind of excited to see how this works out. I'm excited to play around and uh, use cob in this capacity. So we'll see how this all works. So now I got a good start to the dirt, but I'm gonna need a lot more dirt. So I got a lot of work to do, I got a lot of shoveling, then hopefully we can get started building. I got 14 cartfuls of dirt ready to go. I am eager and ready to start building again. I can't wait. All right, good morning y'all. The sun is up and shining. And I am ready to start building on this wall. I got all that dirt ready to go. I got my air compressor out. That's ready to go. I'm going to get on top of the wall and start putting in some nails. We need something for that cob to kind of grip onto so it doesn't shift or move. So I'm just going to put a bunch of nails kind of all over the place just to give that cob something to hold on to. It's going to be a lot of work, but I'm going to get it done. We got two days where there's probably not going to be any rain, probably not going to be any rain, but you, know, you can't trust it. You can't trust Google for a number of different reasons. <laughs> but uh, supposedly there won't be any rain, so I just I want to get this cob in place so it's ready to go. All right, Jess is out here. We are about to start on the cob layer. All right, so give it to me straight. How does this first batch feel to you? Well, Considering it, I've never done this before, uh, it's kind of hard to say, but I'm wondering if it's going to be hard to get it in there with it being quite this dry and stiff. Is it stiff? Is it too dry and stiff? I don't know if that helps. <laughs> uh, A light misting? You, you, can, you can unscrew it. It's going to be tricky getting it just right. It's got to be malleable enough to kind of shape up there but not too loose where it's just going to run right off the wall. I feel like this is going to take a lot of cob. Yeah. All right so I'm about to do a cob mix and I kind of wanted to take you guys through it because it's a little bit different from how I've been mixing the cob. Now of course uh, one thing you know I, I told you before when I got this dirt, I didn't sift it barely at all. I just picked out some of the larger rocks, maybe fist size or greater. But as you can see, there are a lot of rocks in this dirt. And that's good, because this is gonna become aggregate for that layer of, for that cob layer. I also have here some of the concrete sand that we had left over from some of our ferro cement projects. And I've been using a little bit of this in the mix too. Uh, just to reduce the clay content and the clay sand ratio and i'm using the concrete sand just because of the variation in granule size what you don't want to use is like beach sand where it's all very similar in particle size and they're very rounded now for any traditional cob maker uh, they generally don't like using cement mixers and for if you're making a large batch of cob especially when building walls yeah, the cement mixer might get a little tedious. But for our case, I think it's been working pretty well. But you do have to work from a wet mix to a drier mix so that it gets mixed thoroughly. So I usually start here with my one gallon of water, always with the one gallon of water. Put that in first. 
let that swish around for a little bit. Then I add my straw. I usually just grab a couple handfuls, throw that in. Now the concrete sand. I just put maybe about a half a shovel full just to kind of reduce that ratio. Now it's that dirt. It's that rock heavy dirt. I put in uh, approximately three shovelfuls, sometimes a little bit more. Uh, what I'm looking for is a consistency uh, that's a little thicker, a little stiffer than the way we've been making our cob for placing it on the side of the wall, but not quite as thick that maybe you would make it for traditionally building a wall. Just likes it a little bit more malleable so she can kind of shape it and sculpt it up on top of that wall. I like to make it a little softer for her. All right, look who's joining us today. Damn, why are you always looking so good when you're out here slinging mud? How come you don't wear no mud clothes? I just think you're looking beautiful this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Too beautiful for slinging mud, but that's what you do best. Might as well be a politician. <laughs> All right, you ready? All right, girl, let's do this. So using these buckets, it makes it a little more manageable, like bringing the material up here. And then I can just dump the bucket right onto the wall. And then I kind of work it into the shape that it needs to be in. Oh, pretty simple. Pretty simple. We're just trying to fill these gaps in between the boards here with the cob and then we can put more earth bags on top of that I think so far it's working out pretty well what are your experiences now working with like actually I mean you've been work we've been working with cob for a while but this is the first time we kind of actually started kind of building up a little, a little bit of a wall with it mm -hmm. uh, so what was your kind of experience with that both your positives and negatives okay so yeah, it's a little different building a wall than how we've been using it kind of as like a plaster. I mean, one thing is just the weight of that material. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just how like dense it is and the mass of it. This mix has been like a little thicker, mm -hmm. a little drier. Plus and then uh, we're leaving in a lot of the rocks and you're adding sand to it too. So it's like more of that aggregate that adds more weight and mass to it. And you can kind of, you can just kind of feel that, huh? Yeah. Have you ever heard anyone of making a cob layer in between earth bags? Have you ever seen anyone use this technique before? No. <laughs> Are you thwacking it? A lot of times they call for uh, thwacking when you're building cob, right? Yeah. This is more like spanking. You gotta spank that cob, right? <laughs> Teach that cob a lesson. <laughs> Was that uh, sour and then a little sweetness? <laughs> you spanked it and then you rubbed it? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a pretty labor-intensive process. Well, I know definitely for you, you had to move all that material around and that's kind of heavy. I actually lifted a few of the buckets of cob up onto the wall myself and I could barely do it. But you were doing that all day. <laughs> Move it from the mixer into the bins, and then move the bins over to the house. And then put it in the buckets, and then lift the buckets up the ladder. Uh, it's probably one of the maybe the most physically intense uh, parts of the build that we've had so far for me. Mm -hmm. And now for you, I mean, it definitely probably wasn't a whole lot easier. 
I mean, after I had went and put uh, nails over the entire top of there. So you, uh, like, it's kind of precarious up there to begin with, but then with all these nails jutting out, and uh, that's still pretty tough work, what you were doing, uh, kind of applying everything and molding it. But I really like the material, and I like how sculptural it can be. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy working it with my hands, like I was doing, and and kind of molding it. That was enjoyable. This layer is kind of experimental for us. I don't think I've ever heard anyone doing a cob layer in between earth bags. So we're gonna see how this works out. I think it'll work out really well. I think so too. I mean, it's pretty much, I mean, the same material as the earth bags, except a little bit of straw in there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's still gonna have, I feel, that same monolithic quality to it once we finish the dome. For this layer, I think it's good that we kind of did it this way, maybe, because it kind of is a way to stick all those pieces together with the boards and everything. It, hopefully it'll tie everything together really well and give us a good uh, place to continue on building. And we didn't come to this uh, cob layer as like a, with an, as an easy decision. Uh, we were definitely looking at a lot of different methods, a lot of different materials. You know, we were thinking of do, kind of doing a concrete bond beam, but uh, just some of the logistics to it, some of the costs. Uh, we weren't sure if that's the way we wanted to go. We're also possibly looking at doing a wooden type bond beam and having a layer of wood in there. But we didn't know how comfortable with that we were. And plus with wood prices of where they were at, uh, that was pretty expensive too. I think that might have been an even more expensive way to go than the concrete bond beam. But then we ended up going with cob. And we thought that was kind of like uh, maybe a best of both worlds type thing. Probably not as strong or probably not as like structural as the concrete would be. But we think it'll actually last longer and really kind of mesh with the build um, a lot better than the concrete would. I think it will. I don't think we would have done this as a bond beam if we were putting on a traditional type roof. Oh, no, for sure. But the way that we're doing it with um, just these little eaves on the side and having a dome structure, I think it might be more appropriate for us. So we got about halfway done with the cob layer on the earth bag dome. I think it's looking pretty good. Unfortunately, it's getting late and rain's coming. Rain's coming soon. So there's a storm approaching and it could come as soon as tonight. So while we got some daylight left, Jess and I want to get up there and we want to put some tarps up there to cover the work we already did. Uh, I think it could probably handle some rain, but we could be getting like maybe uh, one and a half to three inches of rain during the storm. So I want to make sure the top is covered and ready to go. I'm hoping we have enough tarps to cover. Ah, oh, man, I am excited. We got those rains yesterday. Got my soil mix all wet, so now I shouldn't have to use as much water when we do that cob building. I'm excited. And we got that rain. Let me show you. Let me show you guys what we got. So from that uh, rain that we got yesterday, 0.3 inches. Not a lot, not a lot, but uh, it felt like a lot last night when, uh, when it started coming down. But I love it. All those uh, giant red velvet mites are out scurrying about over here. I love the desert during the monsoon season. Ah, man, uh, as you can see, Jess is looking all nice. She got all prepped for this morning. Nice, fresh pair of clothes. Me, I'm still, wear <laughs> I'm still wearing my mud clothes from yesterday. I actually put on a sweater because it's a little bit chilly with the clouds. I don't want to hear it. What is it, like low 70s right now? <laughs> we got half of the cob course done. 
I was hoping to kind of finish this whole thing. So I'm, I'm eager. I know a lot of people are probably gonna have questions about like, well, when you get with the bags on there and you start tamping on it, you know, is that gonna crush? Is that gonna be crushed? Is it gonna crack? Is it just gonna spill all over the place? And I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> we're, we're gonna find out. So, uh, you know, we got this intense uh, storm rolling in. So I really don't know how all this is gonna play out over the next couple days. I think we're supposed to get rains today. I think we're supposed to get rains tomorrow. But as soon as the rains let up, we're gonna get back on there. We're gonna finish that course. And then, uh, then we're gonna go back into the bags and hopefully we can just ch -ch 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 knock all that out. This has been kind of a difficult week for me. Uh, I found out that my dad is very sick. He tested positive for COVID and he had a stroke. Now the thing is, he's living in the Philippines, uh, so I can't be there with him, but I was able to do some video calls and see him. I was able to speak with him before uh, it might have been before he had the stroke because he was able to recognize me. He said hi, he spoke a little bit, but now he's in the hospital and he's getting treatment, but I don't know, you know, what, what's going to happen with that. So I'm a little worried about that. You know, uh, in the U.S., uh, with his age, you know, he probably be covered with uh, insurance and stuff like that but we you know we're not familiar at all with the Philippines and I know he can't get you know Medicare over there and I, I really don't know how quite the Filipino um, quality of the health care is there over there so you know we're just trying to stay positive about the whole situation as best we can uh, this is I know for me, just having lost my my own mom to this and having to see her go through what she did, uh, this is especially taxing on us to see now her father come down with that. And uh, you know, so there isn't a whole lot we can do and there's not a whole lot I think they, they can do over there. So we're just trying to stay positive. Um, we're just trying to send as many positive thoughts and prayers as we can. And, you know, just uh, well, I'm trying to take care of her because, like I said, it's her dad going through this, and it's it's never easy. I know from a first-hand experience, watching your parent go through that is uh, it's very difficult. So you know, keep in mind she's out here busting butt, and she has got a lot on her heart and her mind. So it's very strong. So we definitely got a lot on our minds and our hearts at this time. Uh, so, you know, we're just trying to build, we're just trying to keep moving, trying to keep working, trying to get things done as best as we can out here. So we're gonna try and get this course done as soon as we can. Of course, those rains are rolling in, but we'll, we'll let you guys know exactly what happens with this storm, how much water we collect. I'm kind of hoping that with uh, the rain that we are, we're supposed to get, that maybe the poly tanks will overflow. And uh, if that happens, we will bring you guys along. We'll bring you guys along for uh, finishing this up. And I really can't wait to see uh, all the extra additions that we'll be making as we go up. I definitely send some prayers for Jessica's dad and maybe say some prayers. Say we, uh, hopefully we get that rain. <laughs> all right, y'all, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.